Hey, welcome back everyone. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your instructor for this AZ900 examination series. We just learned about different types of networking solutions available within Azure. In this walkthrough, we're going to go through creating a virtual network and create two different virtual machines in both of these networks and we're going to test the connection between them. So without wasting any more time, let's go and find out how to do that. So now I'm in my Azure portal. So the first thing what we need to do is we need to create a virtual network. So to create a virtual network, we can go to all services and go to networking and select the virtual network. As you can see that I already have a couple of virtual network created for other resources within my Azure subscription. I'm going to create a brand new virtual network for this experiment. So for that, Let's hit on add a virtual network. And within that, all we have to do is create a name for the virtual network. And by default, you have to select a resource group and your subscription as well. Make sure you select a region where you are trying to keep your virtual machine as well. So when you create a virtual network, you have an option to add your IP subnet, up your subnet name, up you can add your subnet ranges, etc. If not, by default, Azure will create its own first address space and a default subnet for you as well. So you don't have to worry about all that when you try to create a virtual network. So you can click on the subnet details if you would like to modify the details or if you like would like to add a new subnet, you can always add a new subnet, give a name for your subnet and you can create that as well. There are other tabs which is not that relevant for this AZ900 series, which is advanced topic. We will talk about that when we go through exam AZ104. So hit on review create. Uh, this is going to take at least a minute or so to create your first uh, virtual network. So when you get your brand new virtual network, you will have your first virtual network with an IP address space and you will have your subnet as well. Now that your virtual network has been successfully created, let's click on go to resource. It will take you directly to the VNet one. So once you are inside the VNet, you can go and see the options under the left hand side. Under settings, that's where you can see the address space. You can check the subnets. Uh, if you would like to turn on the DDoS protection, you would be able to do that. You can modify the firewall, etc. The next task is not completely relevant for this topic, but we have to create two virtual machines. So we will create two virtual machines and we place it under this uh, VNet and I will show you how you can connect these virtual machines together. So we have learned about how to create a virtual machine in the previous task. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fast forward the whole process of creating these two virtual machines. So I will see you on the other side. So now I have fast forwarded the video. So what you are seeing in the background is I'm creating two virtual machines. One is VM1 and the second virtual machine is VM2. And after I create these two VMs, I will attach these VM to this virtual network we created. The virtual network we created is called VNet. So all I have to do is go to this VM and attach this VM to the VNet. So if you're wondering how to create a virtual machine, I'm sure you would have watched the first walkthrough where I explained how to create a VM from scratch. So this is the process of creating these two VMs and attaching to the VNet so that we can continue our experiment of testing the connection between these two. So in this task, now we have created two, two virtual machines. I'm gonna download these RDP files and I'm gonna log in to both these VMs. So all we have to do is download these RDP files, open this virtual machine side by side so that we have a command prompt or we have uh, a PowerShell to test connection between these two VMs. Basically, all we are trying to do now is we are going to ping uh, a connection to VM1 and ping a connection to a VM2. So that's the test what we are going to see. So I, don't, I didn't want to bore you guys down with that on a slow paced video. 
So all I am doing right now is logged into these two VMs. I put them side by side. And now I'm going to open a PowerShell window and I'm going to keep that on side by side as well so that we can run this command and execute and see if we are able to establish a connection between these two VMs. So now that we have created these two VMs, uh, on the left hand side, you see the VM1. On the right hand side, you see the VM2. So I'm going to test the VM1 by itself to see the connection within the VM itself is working. So I'm going to the VM2, and I'm going to ping VM2 itself. So that, that is going to work anyways. So the next step is we are going to ping uh, VM2 uh, from VM1. And similarly, I'm going to ping VM1 from VM2. So as you can see that the connection request will time out. Because by default, ICMP or Internet Control Message Protocol isn't allowed through Windows Firewall. So what we have to do is we have to run a command or we have to go inside the firewall and allow this uh, ping communication to happen between these VMs. So without even going through all this process of showing it through the graphical user interface or GUI, I'm going to basically show you how to run this in a command way. So all you have to do is run a command called new net firewall rule and allow your ICMP version 4 in protocol within this uh, uh, within both these VMs. So apart from watching these walkthroughs, uh, I have created this walkthrough in a simple format so you can just simply follow and not do it by yourself to learn how to do this. But if you are that kind of a person where you would like to have a hands-on experience for learning, so what you can do is you can Check out the blog, which I'm going to create in a guide to cloud.com. I will have these steps mentioned in the blog as well. So you can simply take that walkthrough document and just follow the document. I will make sure to include all the commands which I use so far and which I'm going to use in the future walkthroughs as well within the blog as well. So what I'm doing right now is I copied the command from a notepad and I'm trying to copy and I'm going to paste that within the virtual machine. So let's try to execute the command to open the firewall port to allow ICMP in the VM1. So enable that. And uh, basically I'm gonna do the same thing in VM2 as well. So let's go and copy that command and let's go and execute that command within VM2 as well. So once you, once you execute this command, you can see that uh, one of the action within that is you can see that it is enabled, it's true, and the inbound action is being allowed as well. So now if I go back to these VMs and I can go and simply execute the command by pinging the VM2 from VM1 and doing the vice versa from the other VM as well. So you can see that I'm able to successfully ping between these VMs. So congratulations. To avoid additional costs, you need to learn to remove these resources from the resource group. So I'll show you how to remove this. So I'm going to go back to my Azure portal. Let's go to resource group. And we've been using AZ900 as the resource group for pretty much deploying all the services. So virtual machine and the disk is the one which is going to cost you a lot of money. So I'm going to filter by virtual machine. I'm going to pick VM1 and VM2 we just deployed. And I'm going to click on. And I'm going to click on delete. It is asking, do you want to delete this VM1 and VM2? I'd say yes. And click on delete. So when you delete the virtual machine, another tip is it doesn't remove the disk, so you have to go back to the disk and you have to delete the disk as well. So you can find the disk, which is VM1 and VM2. And I can go and delete those as well. So I can, I have already initiated these two. So I'm gonna select yes. 
So this is going to take a couple of uh, minutes to complete the whole process. So it is deleting the virtual machine and deleting the disk as well. So now we have successfully completed the test and I have deleted these resources. So I don't have those two VMs. And if I go to disk, I don't have disk for VM1 and VM2 as well. In the next module, we are going to explore the different types of Azure storage services. So I will see you on the next video. Till then, take care.